So Hogwarts Legacy came out recently and everybody was like <laughs> Developed by Avalanche Studios over 5 years, the game brings the wizarding world to life in a way that people had been hoping for. A fully explorable Hogwarts castle and fully explorable Scottish Highlands around the castle. The game is set in the late 1800s and we take on the role of a new student at Hogwarts school, but things are slightly different as we start late as a fifth year meaning we are way behind our classmates and we'll have to work hard to catch up to them in time for our OWLs. And that's what this video is for. Some helpful tips and tricks to help you get started on your journey through the story of Hogwarts Legacy. So we begin our story by meeting up with this guy here, Professor Fake, who has been tasked with getting us to Hogwarts to get sorted as a fifth year because we have the ability to see traces of a hidden ancient magic that the average witch or wizard cannot see. After being attacked en route to the school and working our way through some mysterious trials, we arrive late for the sorting, and after Professor Black makes some snide comments, we are sorted into our house, which you have free choice in. Be aware that each house has some quests that are specifically locked to them, so you'll have to do a playthrough as each house in order to get the Platinum Trophy for the game on PlayStation, or the equivalent on the Xbox. As a student, you must of course attend classes, and by doing so, you will quickly be educated on how to use many different spells, all of which will prove useful at different points of the game. You attend charms with Professor Ronan, defense against the dark arts with Professor Hecate, potions with Professor Sharp, herbology with Professor Garlic, who is best girl by the way, flying with Madame Kagawa, astronomy with Professor Shah, beasts with Professor Howen, divination with Professor Onai, and optionally, history of magic with Professor Bins. You also go to Transfiguration with Professor Weasley, but that's just to learn a spell later on. All of your teachers will set you extra assignments in order to teach you how to cast other spells, so take the time to do all of these, as the spells in this game are amazing and all can be used effectively. After a while, you will get to visit the village of Hogsmeade, and this is where you can buy things like potion ingredients, spellcrafts which can let you conjure items in the room of requirement, seeds and fertilizers for your plants that you can grow, and best of all, this is where you buy and upgrade your broom. As you progress the story, more people will ask you to do things for them in exchange for rewards and benefits, like the Quidditch shop owner who will ask you to test his broom upgrades so he can improve them and sell them to you for a <clears throat> good price. They're a bit steep, but honestly, in the long run, they're worth it. You'll also see flu points around the map, which are fast travel points that allow you to instantly teleport to any ones you have previously unlocked. While you may miss some of the fantastic sights you'll get to see if you fly around on your broom, Sometimes the journey can feel quite long, especially on an upgraded broom, so if you've already visited one of the hamlets around the school, make sure you enable the flu point so you can easily get back. Given that this is the wizarding world, you will of course encounter some other witches and wizards and magical creatures. Some friendly, some not. Dark wizards, goblins and poachers are everywhere, so feel free to take these out as you come across them. Be aware of their level, as the higher level they are in relation to your own, they become more of a challenge. Some people in the world will become your friend and you'll have the opportunity to do missions with them and advance their friendships with you. You'll also encounter magical creatures throughout the world who will either want to kill you or help you. You'll figure it out pretty quick. Okay, so here are a bunch of tips and tricks to help you get started. Use Levioso on dug bogs when they go to use their tongue attack to suspend them by their tongue, then use Defindo to cut their tongue to deal massive damage, sometimes even insta-killing them. Use Incendio or Confringo on the spiders and Acromantula that further covered in is very flammable and this opens them up to extra damage from your spells. Plus, they deserve it. Eight legs is too many. Use Incendio or Confringo on Inferi to actually be able to damage them. Because, you know, they're already dead. You can't hurt the dead without fire, apparently. Use Flapendo on ten cows. Trust me. Use Flapendo on a troll after they slam their club into the ground to bonk them on the head and stagger them making them take more damage. When you have access to the Room of Requirement, use a small planter to grow mallow sweet leaves, then use those leaves to complete the Merlin Trials as soon as possible to increase your gear space. Buy the T-shaped Potion Station spellcraft as soon as possible. Use that instead of the single burner, as three burners going at once is much better than one. Venomous Tentaculas need large pots to grow, so make sure you buy a large pot spellcraft. Lumos makes Devil Snare go away, so you can safely pass. Always progress Sebastian's questline to learn the unforgivable curses. When you unlock your talents, spend points immediately to get all four of your spell slots unlocked before anything else, otherwise you'll find yourself trying to hot swap spells mid-duel. Revelio is key to finding things. Spam it either on foot or on your broom. Use your talent points to upgrade the effectiveness of your curses, they become really overpowered really really quick. Eventually you'll be introduced to the Merlin Trials. 
These are tests of your skill in some cases and your attentiveness on others. Some of the challenges require you to jump on different platforms. Some require you to light some pots on fire before they descend into the ground, making you find a good path to do it quickly. Some require you to match symbols on a cube to the symbols on the plinth beneath it. Some to get you to destroy spheres on top of pillars using a basic cast. Some require you to move a boulder down a hill. Some get you to destroy some pillars with spells and some require you to guide some green insects to three different pillars with spaces in them for the insects to light them up. These quests expand your gear slot, meaning you can hold more gear that you find around the world. Finally, as you explore Hogwarts, you may stumble across these odd looking doors. I don't know the actual name of them, but I call them arithmancy doors. These doors involve a bit of math to solve and have some chests behind them. They can look quite daunting at first as it's a mixture of numbers and pictures, but I promise they're extremely easy. Each door works the exact same way. There are two puzzles on the door and you'll notice they are within two triangles, one pointing up and the other pointing down with either a number, an icon or a question mark on each point of the triangle with a number in the middle of the triangle itself. The goal is to make the three points add up to the center number and the symbols around the door are the key to that. Near the door will be two triangles, one pointing up, the other down with a dice in the middle. This dice is what you use to solve the puzzle. Near the arithmancy classroom is a box you can open which contains this solution sheet to the puzzles, but I'm going to show you an easy way of doing these puzzles. On screen now you are seeing an image showing what number each symbol is. From left to right, starting at zero, going up to nine. Feel free to screenshot this or take a picture of it and have it. Spin the dice in the corresponding triangle on the wall to match the required symbol to make the triangle add up to the center number. There are many of these around Hogwarts and all are completed the exact same way. Overall, Hogwarts Legacy has so much to do with an open immersive world full of little villages and hamlets that can give you gear, money, quests, Merlin trials, flying time trials, caves, dungeons, dueling arenas, and so much more to do. Be sure to explore everywhere you can. I found the game to be extremely fun and I'm looking forward to finishing a playthrough with each house. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it's been so long since I've uploaded. I've honestly just not been motivated to make anything. And today was the first day in a long time that I've wanted to make a video. Regardless, thank you to anyone who watches this video. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe as it helps the people find the channel for the first time. I hope you found the video informative. Have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.